it starts where it ends. And this is the buttoned up setup of the DC to DC converter for the Starlink where we take 12 volts and make it 48 volts so that we can use a 12 volt system to power the Starlink Mini. This is a quick review of the components we're going to use for this deployment. So first things first, we have the AC to DC charger that comes with the Starlink itself. And then we are going to replace that functionality with this 144 watt DC to DC converter, input 12 volts, output 48 volts at three amps max. So on both these components, really all the components we're using, we're gonna write down in our documentation, the inputs and the outputs and what those values are. So we just know things are good. So on this side, the uh, red and black are our input for our positive and negative, and then the black and yellow are the output. For the output, we're gonna use these, mo um, these parts that I bought on Amazon, link to everything in the description below. And we're just gonna connect these two with Wagyu connectors. What's nice is with the red and black cables for the female inlet, we know which side's negative and positive because they're color coded from the factory. And then we can just plug that in like that and we are good to go. And then we have our AC charger ready to go. If we wanna switch over to AC power, input and that's what's so nice about this setup is we don't have to splice or cut the stock power cord which is 50 feet um i learned about these or this converter from the starlink subreddit so i'm just following what's worked for other folks and repeating it and it's going to work for me okay so now that we've got all our values inputted in our deployment date down, we will move to our next order of business. And on that order, we want to make sure there's not a large variation that we don't understand between the AC to DC input and output, particularly the DC output on the stock uh, controller, which is 30 volts at 2 amps, um, compared to the DC output on the uh, charger we're using, which is 48 volts at 3 amps. So there is a voltage and an amperage difference there, but it's not enough that I'm concerned of. But I still have it all documented just in case I brick my system. Um, I can at least know what sort of power I'm dealing with when I do my um, post-mortem. So let's put these cables together. These Wagyu connectors are probably the simplest, easiest, and fastest way to connect wires together. Um, the first ones, we're using some thinner gauge. Uh, I believe this is like probably uh, 14 AWG wire. The general concept is that the higher the voltage and the lower the amperage, the thinner the wire can be. Um, just a general guideline. So here we have higher voltage 48. Uh, at 48 volts, so the wire is a little thinner. On the input side, we have 12 volts, and we want thicker wire for that uh, voltage. Now, this connector, we need to do. We need to strip off the wire a little bit so that it um, fits better in our connector. So that's what we're doing there, and then we put that latch down, and it's good to go. So, black to black, red to red, and then red to yellow, and those are the first four connections we're going to do in this configuration. All right, so while we're working on getting our wires connected, I'm going to talk about the next step, which is on the input side, we want this to connect to a really nice toggle switch system so that we can use a toggle switch to turn on and off our Starlink power for the DC connector. And we want to make sure that that's fused in as well and have, uh, in this case, we're going to use a 15 amp fuse that's built in and can be reset if that blows. So that way we have some control over the maximum amount of current that could go into the converter and then out of the converter and into the Starlink Mini. All right, so now we're connecting to the 12 volt system, which 
ground is the black wire and that's just going to common ground which is our black bus bar and then red is going to this toggle switch here um, which is the fourth one over in the top toggle switch assembly so right now I'm finishing up the ground and I have the positive already connected and you can see four red wires connected on the right side of the back side of the toggle switch assembly the one on the farthest left with the blue coupling is what's going to the Starlink and that's powered from the DC bus bar with two six AWG gauge uh, power cords so here's the front side and uh, we can see the 15, 15 amp fuse button and those are the buttons right above the toggle switches so that's how you reset the fuse if it blows and then up for on down for off and if the switch is blowing that green light turns to a red light so simple as that this is a marine grade uh, component and i just don't have the faceplate on it going back to the back side we will talk through this wiring one more time just so you can get the lay of the land there's the negative bus bar with our common ground because this system doesn't have a negative bus bar built in positive bus bar and both bus bars are connected to the uh, dc out which we're going to pan over to here which says it's underneath the uh, links power in and so that's where the dc power cables come out of and travel to the uh, bus bars that the switch panel integrates with and then we have a complete circuit All right, let's fire this up by turning our Starlink power on at the toggle and then let's check some voltages before we Plug this thing in or after it's plugged in and just see what happens to our voltage level on both the input and output as we go through the boot up process so we can see our Wagyu connectors connecting everything, and these allow for us to probe right at the conductor level. So that's what we're going to do. Let's connect these probes and see what we see. All right, with Starlink unplugged, we can see the voltage is in the 7 volts range. So that's what we have as our initial output value. Now let's plug it in and see what we get. So we plugged in and... The voltage is staying stable, which doesn't make any sense. So we will power cycle the multimeter and we can see our voltage has jumped into the 120s, high 120s, and then it's starting to drop. So that makes more sense. Um, I don't understand why it's higher than 24 volts, or sorry, 48 volts. And I'm a little concerned about the amperage. so. I'll go ahead and take a measurement on that with another multimeter and we can see uh, what our voltage is at and then what our amperage is at. Also feel the cables, make sure they're not hot to the touch. Uh, if they are, I'll just unplug everything. All right, Starlink's online and it wants an update. So let's just download that update and see what type of voltage draw we get while that's happening. And then we'll take an amperage meter after the power cycle following the software update. This is gonna go fast with the power of editing. All right, so while that's downloading, I wanna talk about one more important part of our uh, configuration here. So this is connected to a Victron system for a camper van. And the Leviathan Wakes is the Wi-Fi from the home and the MCRN Tahachi Echo Charlie Foxtrot 270 is the Wi-Fi from the Starlink. And so the way this will work is when the van leaves the driveway, it will connect to the Starlink if it's on, and then all the data from our power system in the camper van will post to the web application uh, for Victron, the Victron portal, and we'll be able to get information on uh, battery, solar, alternator charger, uh, and then any amperage draw from uh, any appliance on this system saved to the cloud. So that's a great use case that I'm excited about and plan to test in further testing. And the Starlink Roam makes that possible. Okay, so 
Before we use this second multimeter to monitor amperage, we'll go ahead and look at the voltage on the input side and the voltage on the output side. So we have 13 on the input side, 66 on the output side. So that output voltage has dropped in half and the input voltage has um, stayed pretty steady. So that is that measurement. All right, let's look at our current as the Starlink goes through a boot sequence and boots into its new firmware or software update. Okay, so our amperage goes to zero, voltage is staying in the 60s, and now our amperage is up to 0.3. All right, and now we're still at 0.3, so very low amperage, 0.2. Low amps is a good thing when you're dealing with this high voltage. So nothing to be concerned about here. At least uh, that's what I think. Okay, we'll connect the phone onto the new Wi-Fi, do a Wi-Fi test, and that's coming back strong. And we'll do another one where we're connected to Starlink, and that's coming back good enough. We can see amperages at 0 0.5, 0 0.4. Voltage is still in that sub-60 range. For our next test, we are going to play something on YouTube in higher definition and see what our voltage and amperage is. And both of those things are staying pretty uh, stable. So that's that's good. Um, another you know positive indicator for the electrical state of this system. If we switch to watching a video of a non-short YouTube video. In theory, this takes more data, more power from the Starlink. We're still seeing stable amperage and voltage on our multimeters, so another good sign. Okay, that just about wraps up our testing. It is time to give this circuit a label that says what it is and put it in production. Oh man, we're gonna have to trim the corners off that label. Doesn't look as clean as it could. All right, so our wiring's all buttoned up, nice and clean, nothing on the floor of the van, and everything's pretty rolling earthquake proof, which is the road system in the United States that I'm driving on. And we're excited, we've achieved our goal. In any case, that's all I got for you today. Thanks for watching, we'll see you around. Oh, and as a little bonus, we have the stock AC plug zip tied into our system on the side just in case we ever want to fail over to that or use an AC power for this for some reason we don't know about right now because you don't know what you don't know. <laughs>